on the full moon in July, we commemorate the, the Dhammajaka Sutta. The Buddha's very first. And we're, at the end of that sutta, one of the five brethren gained the Dharma eye. And the story goes that in the succeeding days, the Buddha taught the remaining ones to gain the Dharma eye. We don't know what Dharma he taught them. And then at some point, he taught them the sutta, not self. So it's about this time of the year. So it's good to think about it. It starts out with the Buddha saying that form, feeling, perceptions, fabrications, consciousness are not self. And he gives two arguments. The first argument is that you can't control these things. You can't say that have, they can be this way, they can be that way. You can control them to some extent, and that's going to be important for the practice. But in ultimate level, you can't say they have to be this way, that, or they should be that way, and they'll automatically be that way. In other words, if, it were, if they were ourselves, then I wouldn't lend themselves to disease. The fact that these things can get diseased, that's proof that we can't really lay claim to them with any sense of security. Because that's the whole idea of a self, something you lay claim to and you feel secure. This is you, this is what you are, this is who you can move around and order around. And yet these things won't be ordered around. They'll order around a little bit, but ultimately you have to let them go. The whole purpose of this is to get you to something better. If there were nothing better, then you hold on to what you got. It's like going across an ocean and the boat you're in it sinks. And there are different things that you can hang on to. There may be some other people who were in the boat that died. You could hang on to their bodies. Or you could hang on to pieces of wood. Or you could hang on to a lifeboat. Or you could find an island nearby and hang on to that. It's because there is something better to hang on to that the Buddha is recommending that you let go of those other things, because they ultimately will let you down. But we do have to make use of these things. So while you're sitting and meditating, you've got the form of the body. Work with the elements in that earth, water, wind, fire to bring things into balance. Focus on the breath in a way that gives rise to a feeling of well being. You use a perception to do that. And use your direct of thought and evaluation to comment on how well you're doing, suggest improvements. And then you're aware of all these things. That's using the aggregates to make them a path, while you have some measure of control over them. So if there's a plank of wood or something you have to hold on to, in the meantime, okay, you hold on to that. But if, you, if it can take you to the island, then you let go. So remember, even though these things are ultimately not self, we can make use of them in the meantime. We can make a path out of them, bring knowledge to these processes. And instead of causing suffering, they provide us with an end to suffering. And then we can let go. There are so many images like that in the canon. The, the image of the raft going across the flood, the relay chariots taking from where you are to another city. You get into the chariot, not hoping to stay in the chariot. You get into the chariot to take you to the next one, to the next one, and the last one takes you to the city. So it learned what to hold on to in the meantime, what to let go. And then finally, you can let go of everything. It was after listening to this talk that all of the five brethren became Arahants. It's too bad we don't have an official day to commemorate that. We can choose our day, we can choose today, and practice in honor of what they attained. <laughs>